All right, this is third grade, module five, lesson 21. And in this lesson, we're going to be helping students recognize and show that equivalent fractions are when two fractions live at the same place on the number line. And a quick like uh, sample of that would be like if you have zero and you have one here, well, we could cut this in half, in which case we've got a half. But we could also cut each of those in halves uh, to create quarters, in which case we'd have zero fourth, one, whoa, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, and four fourths. And so now students will recognize that, oh, two fourths and one half live in the same place on the number line. That means these two fractions are equivalent to each other. So we're going to start as an example. Uh, let's say we've got this line that goes from 0 to 2, and let's cut each interval into fourths. So from 0 to 1, let's cut it into fourths. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And remember, a nice shortcut for cutting things into fourths is to first cut it in half, and then cut the halves in half, and that creates your quarters. And if we wanted to label this, we would say, okay, that's 0 fourths, 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, 5 fourths, 6 fourths, 7 fourths, and of course, 8 fourths. Some things we want students to recognize, 8 fourths represents the number 2, 4 fourths represents 1, and 0 fourths represents the number 0. And a nice little shortcut that we want students to recognize is that 8 divided by 4 is 2, 4 divided by 4 is 1, so that's how we know that we've labeled these correctly and located them correctly, and 0 divided by 4, 0 divided by anything is 0, as long as you're not dividing by 0. So 0 divided by 4 is 0. And now, on the same number line, if we wanted to, we could draw an extra line in each of these, between each of these. So we're going to cut the fourths in half. And so if I were to cut the fourths in half, what would that do to our fractions? Well, let's zoom in a little bit here. All right. So we can see that our fractions become, instead of fourths, our little intervals here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we end up with eighths. All right, so that means this guy is zero eighths, one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, and of course one whole is eight eighths. So I'm going to put a box right there. Now if we wanted to, we can continue on with the next intervals, the next whole number. So then we've got 9 eighths, 10 eighths, 11 eighths, 12 eighths, 13 eighths, 14 eighths, 15 eighths, and then 2 is 16 eighths. And sure enough, 16 divided by 8 is 2. All right, and then if we wanted to, we can say, well, 8, eight divided by 8 is 1. All right, and so let's zoom out a little bit here. And now we can see that we've got some equivalent fractions. So wherever two fractions live at the same location, that means those two fractions are equivalent. For example, 2 fourths and 4 eighths live at the same location. That makes them equivalent. Uh, we can see um, a lot of examples. Here's another one right here. 5 fourths and 10 eighths live at the same location. So that means 5 fourths and 10 eighths are equivalent to each other. And of course we can also see way over here 8 fourths and 16 eighths are equivalent, and they're also both equivalent to the number 2. So that's another way we can 
record that. So that's a nice overview of what we would do. Teachers, parents, if I were you working with students, I would probably go through this process right here. Um, maybe using paper strips. Um, but we really want students to be thinking about that number line. So rather than a tape diagram that kind of suggests a little bit of an area model, we really want to have students starting to locate their fractions on a number line. So let's do some practice. So what we've got here is we've got some fourths at the top, and we've got eighths down at the bottom, and we're going to be doing this on the exact same number line. This is just like what I just showed on the previous slide. So we've got zero fourths right here, and then we've got four, one fourths, two fourths. So once you see this big interval right here from zero fourths to one fourth, that means that big of a step represents a fourth or a quarter. So this is the same kind of step, and sure enough, it goes from one quarter to two quarters, or one fourth to two fourths, and then from here to here. So that makes that blank three fourths. And then we can see we've got another interval here of one fourth, so three fourths to four fourths. And so we can just fill these in. So here's five fourths, and here's six fourths, and then of course we already have seven fourths and eight fourths. So down here, we have our eighths. So of course zero is zero eighths, then we have one eighth, and that makes this two eighths, then three eighths, then four eighths, then five eighths, six eighths, then right here is seven eighths, and right here is eight eighths. So let's put those in, seven eighths and eight eighths. And then we've got 9 eighths, 10 eighths, 11 eighths. So that makes this one 12 eighths. Oops. 12 eighths. And then we've got 13 eighths, 14 eighths, 15 eighths. And then this one would be 16 eighths. 16 eighths. I don't know if that black line was specifically supposed to be a fraction bar, but I sure turned it into one. All right. So now we can make some fill in some blanks here. All right, so we've got one-fourth here, and one-fourth is equal to something. So let's look up at our number line, and here's one-fourth, and here's two-eighths. They live at the exact same location right here. So that means one-fourth is equal to two-eighths right there. They're equivalent. In the same way, six-fourths is equal to twelve-somethings. Well, let's look for six-fourths. Boom, there's six-fourths, and six-fourths lives in the same spot as 12 eighths. So it would be an eight that goes there. And then the last two-thirds is equal to what? Well, two-thirds should not be on this one. So right now, parents and teachers, I want you to kind of hold off on this one because this one actually is applicable on the next number line. So this one we're going to go a little bit faster. We've got one-third, two-thirds, three-thirds, four-thirds, five-thirds, six-thirds. So you can see from this size of a jump represents a third. And then, so we've cut it into thirds. Now down here, we're going to be cutting all these little guys into sixths. Now they're not asking us to give all of the blank spaces, um, all the missing ones. They're just asking for some of them. So starting here, it doesn't say it, but I'm going to put it in anyway. I'm going to put in right there zero sixths, which makes this guy one sixth, and this guy is two sixths. And this blank, this little one, three sixths. Now, what they really want right here is four sixths, all right? So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And at this point, I think I'm just going to fill in those blanks. So we've got four sixths, then we've got five sixths, then we've got six sixths. And that makes sense because six sixths should be one whole. And then we've got seven sixths, and then this guy is eight sixths. 
and then we've got 9 sixths, and then this guy will be 10 sixths. And then we've got 11 sixths, and then lastly, we have 12 sixths. All right. So now we can fill in our um, missing questions down here. So we've got this one. So our first one, six-thirds. So where is six-thirds? Oh, there's six-thirds is equal to 12 over what? So six-thirds and 12 sixths live in the exact same location right there. Boom. And then similarly, three-thirds is equal to six-sixths. Now this last one here actually goes with the other number line. So I'm going to fill this one in. So two is equal to eight-fourths, which is equal to, and I'm going to squeeze this in, it's going to be sixteen-eighths, because eight divided by four is two. Sixteen divided by eight is two. And that wraps up Grade 3, Module 5, Lesson 21, Recognizing Equivalent Fractions by the fact that they live at the same place on the number line.